what are some of the different types of long stay visas available and how would I choose which one is right for me? Let's talk about a hot topic, which is digital nomads, right? So over the years of doing this for people, we, we kind of have, I guess, two categories and, and the one, the latter one actually becoming more popular these days. So an awful lot of our clients before Brexit were probably people retiring to France or earning second homes. And um, today, a vast majority are actually people that are able to work remotely. So this has presented a whole new kind of challenge in the world in general. Of course, how do you, how do you legalize all of this? The good news is for anyone that has got a digital nomad job, you can work on a long stay regular Goldman, BNS, BNS visa. Uh, sorry to clarify that the visitor visa. Yeah, you're... absolutely. So the visitor visa. So you, you can work and continue to work from home, but there are rules around taxation, how long you stay in the country, et cetera. But in terms of working, you're allowed to work as long as the company does not have any economical interests in France. So i.e., if you're not there to prospect business, and if you are not there to actually be working for a regional office, then you can work from home, right? So that's absolutely fine. You can see paid taxes in your own country social care in your own country, but you're going to have to tick the boxes of private medical care, having some way to be in, and obviously being able to prove income. And after you spend 183 days in the country, guess what? You've got to become a taxpayer. So the good news for most countries that we deal with, there's bilateral tax agreements. So if you pay tax in a country, you won't have to pay it again from. So a lot of our cases are actually covered by the non-state world bond. Another topic that's often of the case, I think it's too much Dick and Angel and escape to the chateau syndrome. People wanting to open the sheets. And we've actually often had the case that, you know, legal advisors have said you must definitely have a work visa or talent passport visa and pay subsequent loads of money to actually get hold of that. And the truth is there's several setups in France that allow you potentially to rent a home or place in, in France without having to register as a business necessarily. So there's lots of laws and regulations. We don't have time to go through those today. And of course, contact me and Bill and talk more about it. But the, the point being is that there are some key options where you don't need to do that, even if you're going to be a, a GIT owner. And, and secondly, I'm in a construction firm myself and renovating houses. Are you going to be ready within 12 months? I, I'm not sure. So if you're going to buy a chateau and actually you're not going to necessarily be, unless you're buying a business and, and you're going to be working straight away. But my point being is that quite often you're not going to be working within those first 12 months. And there's an interesting argument to say that actually what you could do is come in on a long stay visa and after 10 months apply for a change of status on your cup decision. That's something that we very often do that we've been very successfully. And by that stage, if you have a home, et cetera, you're already on the stuff the, the social system uh, in terms of uh, healthcare, you could have saved an awful lot of money in legal fees and setup fees. And as a business owner in France, you've also saved a year's worth of the plantancy fees, which are very high compared to the US or to the UK, notably for countries that I know. Um, so, so that long stay visa is, is very versatile and it also, of course, includes people that are retiring. You know, they want to work, you're retiring, they don't need to worry about it, a work visa or a and passport. And then the other two, I guess, and passport, there's so many intricate things to comply with that I wouldn't have time to go through all of them today. But you could be an entrepreneur. And if you are an entrepreneur, there's a certain amount of money that you have to bring to that. You could be a sports person. You could be a student. There's all of these things, but mainly what that does is it just allows you to have a longer term on that visa. So a full years in total. But the same kind of criteria as the first three things that we said were important apply. So you need to contact them for your insurance. You need to uh, make sure that you're going to be able to sustain your needs and have someone safe for it. And... Finally, the work visa, which I would tend to say is really mainly discussed in several, it's, it, and in a few cases, is that actually really applicable? Because even though it's your employer's responsibility, 
because they have changed in your place of work and they need to co- provide you with a contract in that country and they need to pay for your visa. That would be their responsibility. Very few of them obviously want to do that, but if they did, that's their responsibility and they should pay for that. Um, and it's just more complex in terms of application. So guess what? A legal advisor will charge you more money to do that. But if you are creating your own business and if that's a yoga retreat or a sheet, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, my guess is you're not going to be able to be running it within the first 12 months. And so my advice through hundreds of applications is probably if that's not an a necessity, I'd argue that if it's going to be a necessity to make money within the first 12 months, you might want to reconsider the business project that you have. But in, in all context, really the long stay with a change of status at the end probably would work better. So those are the three main differences, if you like, that the criteria for application are very similar, but of course in the talent passport one, there's so many different variants that you really need to speak to the barrister to be able to make sure that that would work for you. But very often the sort of answer to all is there's no long stay. Okay. Yeah, that's really interesting, especially for the business uh, visas, because I think that's something a lot of people do not know that that's a possibility to come on a visitor visa and then change it. So that could be a really good option for some people. Yeah. And there, there are criteria, and I, you know, obviously the French prefecture have got a mind of their own. So you've got to be careful. Um, and, and when I say they have a mind of their own, it, it is also the case that, for instance, you, on the renewal, you need to have all a private medical cover or a cut vital, which is the equivalent of French healthcare system application or New York Security Social. Recently, we've had one prefecture that said you can't have it on private medical cover, which is completely um, true, if you like, but you can take them to court. So, you know, you've got to be conscious that all of this theory and loads of successful applications can also result in difficulties. And that's when it's good to have somebody and help you through that. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I can see why it would be invaluable to have someone like you guys on the, on that case for them. 